One second, guys. Forgot to update Discord. How are my friends supposed to know I'm streaming? Okay, uh... I think the microphones, everything's on and good and working. Welcome back to another, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team stream. Boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, we're doing post-game stuff. 
first things first, before I before I do anything, I should say that I hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, I did a little bit of research in the meantime. Uh, so I have so I have some goals for today. I did kind of get a little bit spoiled on one thing. I do know that Lucario rank is a thing for your uh, for your mystery dungeon team. Or, oh, I keep saying mystery dungeon team, re rescue team. Uh, how we're like silver rank now. But uh, yeah, we got a lot of stuff to do. First things first, do we have any Zigzagoons? We have one Zigzagoon. We need to pay them a visit. Turns out the Zigzagoon is actually the most valuable Pokemon. Yeah, because something I should have been taking advantage of this whole time, but I didn't even realize was a thing. Uh, pick up. Why does he have an orange gummy? He's not a fighting type. Okay, yeah, he definitely has pick up. Apparently, uh, Zigzagoon, Fampy, or I think Teddy Ursa all can get pick up which will dramatically increase, uh... Actually, let's go ahead and grab a fan P2. Just make a whole new team. Team pickup. Oh, I got three fan P's. That one has pickup. That one has pickup. And that one has pickup, okay. I think they all have pickup. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. Okay, we'll go with this one, I guess. Oh. Which one's which? Wait. Okay, I think it's this one. And then, what else? I wonder how hard it is to find Meowth if you didn't pick Meowth as your uh, starting partner, because apparently they have an ability that multiplies like money that you get. But I haven't seen a single one of them this entire game, so I hope they're not like partner Pokemon only. What else? First off, take their item. Yeah, we're going to be doing a little bit of farming today. It's clear to me that uh, the post-game stuff from last stream absolutely getting destroyed. I didn't realize it was Friday the 13th. Uh, yeah, I kind of got a little bit destroyed. So we're gonna try and like farm some stuff, especially reviver seeds. Of course, the one item he doesn't have. I'm 
trying to think what else we can do to, to be optimal here. Like we got to pick up Pokemon. I definitely want Quilava to be higher level. We're level 34, I think we gotta get to level 36 in order for him to be able to go full Flosion mode. Might as well farm some IQ while we're at it. This game kind of forces you to take the strategy. Uh, like whenever you're playing like the main games and you don't really know what you're doing, so you just stick with your starter Pokemon the entire game. And then you just have like one Pokemon that can destroy everything. This is a huge level advantage. This game kind of forces you to do that because you have to play as the Pokemon that you become and you're stuck with your, your partner that you pick at the start of the game as well. So we have like these two Pokemon that are way more powerful than the rest of them. And then the rest are like way under leveled. So, I don't know, I feel like I should kind of push that a little bit further. But at the same time, we also want to start getting some other Pokemon uh, up to speed. Now, apparently, pickup maze works. Pickup works in these mazes as well. So, I was watching like a YouTube video. I forget the name of the channel, but apparently, whatever type maze you go into. If you have Pokemon with pickup, they're more likely to pick up the gummies that are the, the right color for the type of that maze. Which is really nice. So theoretically, if I keep spamming fire maze, not only will we be uh, getting some valuable experience for Kulava, but we'll also be picking up a, a bunch of items as well. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Ooh, flash fire. I'm not prepared. Yikes, almost one shot, Fampy. They both got Orin Berries. Okay, so which one? Oh, this one has the, uh... The other orange berry. I guess I might as well use that on them. Actually, I still... There's a lot I don't know about this game's mechanics. Give that to the Fampy, and then if I... If I go over to them in the items menu, and I say use, will they use it? Okay, good. Intuitive, it's what you'd expect, but I had to make sure. So basically, we wanted to get these pickup Pokemon up to a higher level. Literally will just give us bonus items.
which apparently that works every floor except for the boss floor. Okay, so they found some stuff. Reviver Seed, perfect. And Red Gummy. So yeah, this should definitely speed things along. Self-cure? We're also making Quilava actually smart. Recovers faster from status problems? Yes. And I took both of their items, right? Yes. Perfect. Now we just gotta deal with the boss, and we can... I guess I should probably get a different Pokémon for... Oh, that's right, Kulava can just walk in the... into the lava, because he's Fire-type. I forgot. No. So I just want to find the stairs now, so I can get to the boss fight. Should be able to deal with the fire types pretty quickly. I didn't even mean to hit that Ponyta, but I still managed to. Yeah, otherwise there's no items in these dungeons, so... The only things you can get are from pickup. I actually didn't need to walk forward there. Uh oh. What's two out of three? Don't go to sleep yet. Darn it. Okay, we're awake again. So this should help us level them up pretty quickly as well. I think Linuna also has the uh, pickup ability. So basically, we're grinding our, our spicy jelly bean into a higher state of being. Probably should have put the reviver seed away. <laughs> oh, they found more stuff. Yoink. Warp seed. I don't even know what that does. Whoops, the Pokemon to a different place on the same floor. Oh! I wish you could give items to Pokemon from escort missions, because that would be perfect. If they could just, you know, teleport out of danger on their own. Also, I should be checking the shop, too, because every time we do one of these mazes, it actually rotates out the stock in the store, as well. Uh, probably over to the right here. Does this work? Yes, it does. Because some moves only work- don't work around corners, others do. And pickups. We got an orange berry and another orange berry. Oh. 
keep accidentally walking into the lava. And then they'll be forced to take a step forward. Oh, we don't usually miss here. Okay, they're going for sleep instead of doing damage, which is really good. Because obviously we'll want them to be awake as, as long as possible. Or they're not going to get experience if they, uh... If they die and get teleported out of here. Slowly but surely. Yeah, every time we do this we should be checking the shops to see if they got reviver seeds back. They are rotating though, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's different TMs there before. We just got unlucky again. Yeah, ideally we would be able to have a whole team of really high level Pokemon with Hiccup. We could just loop through these mazes like a couple times and pick up a ton of items very quickly. Oh, there's another Reviver Seed. Every time we do that, that's like saving us 800 Poké. And this is way faster than regular Mystery Dungeons, because then you have to go through the whole, you know, Oh, it's the end of the day, I'm gonna sleep, and then we're gonna ask if you wanna save. And then you have to, you know, rearrange inventory and stuff. But this way, you can just keep going back in, again and again, without any delay. So this is a bit more efficient, even if there's only like two floors that you can pick up items from. And like I said, if you want this to be optimal, you'd have as many Pokemon to pick up as possible, but... Uh, I kind of want one of our strong Pokemon here, just so that we can get through the boss part easily. And that's just kind of how things are going to have to be for, the, for a little bit, until we can get... Uh, like Zigzagoon or something high enough to uh, take care of the bosses on their own. Getting closer to that point. What does that do? Resets the boosted evasion of foes in the same room? I don't, I don't see a lot of enemies boosting evasion. I usually see them lowering our evasion. Or lowering our accuracy, I guess. Is that useful? I guess it, it, it would really help us in some situations more than just a uh, tail whip would, so. up to 16. Actually, I want to check their stats really quick. They're 17 and they've got 37 HP. They're 16 and they've got 61 HP. 34 attack. 29. 
So I guess Fampy is technically superior to Zigzagoon. I guess we'll have to see whenever I, I get him evolved to Linoon. Maybe that'll tip the scale in favor of uh, Linoon. Actually, can they evolve yet? Not now. Okay. I forget if Fampy has an evolution or not. Okay. Next set of items. Hornberry and... Blast Seed. You win some, you lose some. That's not even like a lose some, that's just like a don't win as much. We're in the lava now. Yeah, we're gonna need to be able to withstand like a bunch of legendaries, so. It's really worth it to do a bit of grinding. Just take like a stream. Because you guys said you wanted to see it. I would have done it off stream. Please, no. Leave my elephant alone. I can't talk just now. Probably ought to give them an Orenberry. Actually, did, you, did I even check to see what item they got? Oh yeah, I did. You guys wanted to see some grinding, so we're gonna do a stream of grinding. Why am I out of quick attack? I need to stop being dumb. At least the fire type maze doesn't really have that high level Pokemon in it. <laughs> Come back here, you coward. Now we check again. Wow, we're really not lucking out with the whole reviver seats in the store thing. Not sure how we're gonna do the whole money situation. That's going to be potentially an issue as well. Another thing we gotta grind out, getting all the friend areas so we actually have places for the legendaries to go. And it seems like a lot of the ones for legendaries actually uh, 
you specifically have to get as rewards. Oh, I should be taking uh, missions for like one dungeon as well. Every time I come out of here. Ooh, nice. We got another red gummy though. My queue went up significantly. Getting smarter every day. I gotta remember we only we only get 13 quick attacks. Come back here, trying to deny his experience. use them instead. Zigzagoon level 18. I wonder what level they actually uh, evolve at. They're normal types, so it shouldn't be too high. Not quite yet, though. I guess once we get a Linoon, we can determine if the all Linoon team, team or all Fampy team is going to be superior. But whatever ends up being the result, uh, we're going to at least have one of them be super high level. From this little bit of grinding here at the start. Is Fampy just normal type or are they ground type? Because that would be pretty good. I didn't take their items yet. Yoink. Oh, they both got red gummies. This setup's kind of funny to me. Back to work, Pokemon. Go back to farming me gummies. Says Kulava. Alright, we actually have to beat them. Y'all got any revive seeds now? <laughs> Lizard people? Oh, they do. Nice. And the joy seed, which is like a uh, rare candy in this game. Do we have money? We have a little bit. thousand dollars. Oh, it costs three thousand for a joy seed? I mean, it makes sense. But still. It's probably worth it. Actually, do we have any? 
I don't know if it works like rare candy where like your stat gains are gonna be less than if you just did it legit. But I don't think the whole like EV farming thing works the same in this game. If I had to guess. Seeds. Nope. Do we have anything we can sell? A lot of orbs. We're becoming orb salesmen, I suppose. like two of each of these. That'll give us at least one, uh, we only need like five of these, probably. I mean, they're useful, we don't need seven of them. That's not very much. Yeah, maybe I'll keep the warp orbs. Switches the user's position with another Pokemon however distant. I'm never going to use that. I guess that means if we get lucky with, with the joy seeds, uh... We actually could just go ahead and get lava up to Typhlosion tier. Still need like 900 left. We're having an out of money experience. What do we have that we can get rid of? Some TMs that I just am not going to use, probably? Do we have, like, duplicates out? They're probably worth something. I kind of want to keep at least two on hand in case there's, like, quests for them, though. So I don't have to get rid of my only one. Still. And then bullet seed I hear is really good, so maybe I want to teach Venusaur that. AKA ourselves from the rest of the game that's in a friend area somewhere. We can't even see. That's a lot of orange gummies. Do we really need that many orange gummies? I don't think we need that many orange gummies. Well, I'll take one to see how much they're worth. 
Let's see if we can sell them for a lot. Yeah, they don't sell for hardly anything. These sell for quite a bit, though. I think I want to keep the extra taunt, though. I don't know if that resets our experience or if it just adds enough experience to take us to the next level. So maybe we're going to wait until after we get one more level and then immediately take it so they get the most value out of it. Just a thought. Yeah, okay. So, we've got the Fampi, we got the Zigzagoon. Time to get them up to a higher level. Oh, actually, I want to put our money away so we don't die and lose everything. That's still an issue we got to sort out. How to actually get enough money to buy out all the friend areas. Oh, not the water maze. No? Oh, of course the one time it doesn't ask for confirmation. I'm in danger. Our Venusaur was here. I'm dead. Wait, no. We live for now. Yeah, we definitely need to get some Pokemon other than the two that we use the entire main game to be a high level. Oh wait, before I go, I need to grab items from them. Because if, if they have their hold item slot filled, they won't pick anything up. Now they got stuff. Take and come on, reviver seed. Uh, it's blast seed. At least we spawned right on top of the stairs. They, they attacked- one of them got right in the way of the other one. They ended up attacking themselves. Okay, that went better than expected. Oh, I need to start taking some missions too. What do we have? A lot of Magma Cavern. Quests, bullet seed. I guess we're gonna keep looking for magma cavern ones. That's probably pretty ideal.
Yeah, it doesn't look like we have any available here. Apparently you can cheat, too, if you wanted to. And you use, like, a code generator for the, uh, Wonder Mail. To get, like, infinite whatever you want. I'm not doing that, though. I'm not gonna go this far without cheating and then just suddenly start. Okay, we've got no magma cavern quests. We've got revived seeds. We have one in the shop. How much would all this stuff sell for? Not a lot. at it again. Into the dojo. Seems like Zigzagoon's always the lucky one. Rose, quick dodger. Better at evading attacks and moves? Of course. Whenever he evolves, he's going to be the smartest Typhlosion to have ever lived. Boss fight came early. Thirty-five. We're one joy seat away from uh, the flosion explosion. Why does that take a turn to take an item from them? Doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking Vampy is superior technology to Zigzagoon. Because they have uh, more HP. Nice hat, by the way. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so next floor is the boss. So that move can't be used, what are you saying? Making it miss almost all of its attacks and moves? Probably don't even need a move for this. Kind of interested in seeing what Typhlosion's idle animation is going to be. Quilav has a twerking purple jelly bean. I guess that means we should be able to use the Joy Seed now and get him up to Typhlosion level. store our stuff here really quick. Oh, didn't select one of them. Dodgy R button. There it is. It's time. Oh, wait, I think we need to uh, actually put our team members back, but let's just go ahead and use the item at least. Wait, I can't use it here? Of course. We've got two reviver seats at least. Try and be efficient with this as much as possible. Uh, I don't have 1600 either. We get enough for one reviver seed at least. Uh, actually, I think we can send them home from here. Stand by. Zigzag right back to where he came from. Zigzagoon. I probably shouldn't have done that. Since I need to be, like, I guess in a dungeon in order to use the uh, Joy Seed. Go to like the grass maze just so that we'll be able to breeze right through. Take the minimum amount of time. The lava is now 36, which, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, Typhlosion level. Just gotta get back to town now. I'm gonna double check that just to make sure, because it does tell you. Evolution possible. And then we'll assign a fire move, just so we can just... Flamethrower our way through here, really quick. Oh, that doesn't have any range to it at all. Flamethrower will cover a huge distance. Guess not flame wheel. I sleep.
That must be like one of the only ways that you can be right next to a sleeping enemy Pokemon is if it spawns you right next to it. Because if you, if you normally get anywhere near them, they wake up. So it's probably kind of rare in the grand scheme of things. Hello. You're just in time. Soon, uh, Quilava shall become Typhlosion. If he can... If he can stay awake. shot everything. Shiny Squirtle in the underground on Brilliant Diamond Randomizer? Congratulations. I don't even know what Shiny Squirtle looks like. I think if it's any starter, uh, getting a Shiny is pretty cool though. to make the explosion explosion happen. Ye who seek awakening. This is Luminous Cave. It's so weird that Pokemon need to be in, like, a special cave in order to evolve in this game. No. No items n necessary. Typhlosion. Well, Quilava, but soon-to-be Typhlosion, has everything he needs to become a beautiful, uh, flammable butterfly. Quilava is undergoing changes. His appearance has changed. <laughs> Starter was actually shiny cradle. <laughs> nice. Uh <laughs> What is this idle animation? <laughs> Dance moves just unlocked. Something, something really special about this. Is it just me or does his, uh, his sprite look like really tall for some reason? Line up with Tyranitar. Just uh I think that's pixel for pixel, like the shadows in the same spot. Tyranitar size type illusion. This game's weird about like Pokemon scale.
I don't know why he's th this is so amusing to me. He's gonna get you. He's just gonna walk at you slowly. Wave dashing. Both of our starter Pokemon are now their final evolutions. Amazing. I need to figure out how to farm money better. Do we get any more missions for... Oh, we did get some Magma Cavern. But it's an escort mission. Yeah, that's not worth it. Okay, I did hear that Uproar Forest is a good place to farm items as well. Let's go get, uh, the Sigzagoon back. I don't know, there's part of me that just wants to go all in on Fampies, because they've got like twice as much HP. I just don't know how good Lin Linoon gets. I don't know if we actually can take three Pokemon, so I guess we'll just take Zigzagoon with us. And then we'll do a quick run through of Uproar Forest. Actually, I should probably bring at least one food item and potentially. Well, I don't want to bring a Reviver Seed because that's what we're trying to get more of. So if I end up using one, it'll be end up. Like, net negative. I wonder how rare that is, getting, like, a shiny starter. I mean, if it's normal shiny odds, then, you know, it's, what, 1 in 4,096? If you're like intentionally trying to get like a shiny starter, you'd have to like reset the game uh, 4096 times to probably get a shiny starter. We'll take Apple. Take two apples. Just because I know Uproar Forest goes pretty deep. I don't know how ideal this setup is, but we're gonna find out. so weird that we're effectively playing as our sidekick from the rest of the game. Oh yeah, this is a good place to farm grass gummies though. So we can make our uh, former plant self super smart. Uh, 
Oh, this just is the loop to nowhere. Sigsagoon found an item somewhere. Oh, that's right, I need to make sure I, I clear out the Sigsagoon's inventory every floor. Yeah, this is nice having Sigsagoon with us, because it's like a guaranteed bonus item. Due to pick up. stream. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like we're gonna need to be a little bit over level. A little over geared, a little over leveled. Actually, what does C dot do? Chlorophyll? Boost attack frequency if the weather is sunny. Awakens quickly from sleep. That's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. This floor is probably, uh, cleared out. Oh. <laughs> I forgot they are on our side. Whoops. Okay, so this is way better in terms of, like, money farming. Because, like, the stacks of money in... I always forget what it's called. Like, the spooky woods... ...are only, like, what? Like, 70-something? And they're, like, 140, 150-something here. I guess I don't really know what we're working towards because of, uh, I mean, I've never managed to get to the post-game in this game before. I don't think it would be too hard to get, like, max out our, uh, team's level. And I think it would be good to try and get at least one legendary. Obviously, it's kind of weird having our Mystery Dungeon team be called Sandshrew and not have actual Sandshrew on our team. So we need to get one of those as well. I was under the impression there's like a bunch of like new Mystery Dungeons and stuff in the post-game. I'm not quite sure how we get to those. I 
don't want to look things up too much because I don't want to, you know, spoil whatever happens. I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's going to be really hard determining what the stopping point for this game is. But I do know that the challenges that we have ahead, we're going to want to be uh, a good level 4. So I'm going to do some grinding. Oh, once again I almost attacked our own C-Dot. just looks so much like an enemy. I look at his acorn-shaped self, and I can't help but feel threatened. I don't know what his intentions are, but I know that they can't be good. Zigzagoon level 20. I wonder when Zigzagoon actually levels up. Oh, it can evolve now. Interesting. I really ought to do that. Do I want to continue here? Probably not. I think it'd be more optimum if we were going to farm items here. If we were actually controlling uh, the Venusaur again. As many grass gummies as it gives you. You could farm IQ and actually be using those for keeping the hunger stat from going too low. I'm just going to continue on in the next floor. Obviously Typhlosion is not very interested in uh, grass gummies. Just not to his taste. Actually, I don't think anyone actually knows what the <laughs> gummies or berries taste like in Pokemon. Would you would you stop that? Confusion's like one of the has to be one of the most annoying mechanics in Pokemon. Tin Poke. How generous. Yeah, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. I don't know why it can just randomly start hailing in the middle of the... ...middle of the forest. It sure is annoying, though. I 
think we outheal the hail damage. I'm just worried about Zigzagoon. I think they're fine. If that's their only source of damage. I wish we had some sort of, like, weather controlling move, like Sunny Day or something. I don't know if you can actually learn that in this game. Ah, Zigzagoon's really taking a hit here. Oh man. Yeah, we're gonna have to probably give a berry to Zigzagoon here soon. Oh wait, no, we found the stairs. Please, no more hail. <laughs> weather? No weather. We're almost out of space. I'm just going to give him the orange berry anyway. Full heals. Seventy-eight. Pretty good. Actually, I wonder if, if you can get Reviver Seeds from the Tiny Woods. Because if so, that would be a really broken way to farm them. Just run Tiny Woods over and over again. Oh, yeah. Probably want to take care of that. I forget how many floors this dungeon has. And I keep forgetting to take items from Zigzagoon. Ah. We're officially out of space. Alert. Last time on Monkey Ball Z. Oh, there's two of them now. Zigzagoon has found Chestnut. I wonder if there's any special use for that besides the one quest where you rebuild your house. I should just give these all to, uh... Certain Venusaur. Eat it. Weak type picker. Ah, 
How smart is this plant? When battling several foes, the Pokemon will first target Pokemon to have a type disadvantage. Smart. First target Pokemon with lowest HP. That probably makes more sense, actually. Razor Leaf was one-shotting everything, so... It's probably better for them to be going after the Pokemon with lower HP than a Pokemon with a type disadvantage. If I had to guess. Be able to get him from here. Please don't take out the zigzagoon. Yoink. What's zigzagoon gonna find on the next floor? I guess we'll find out. But first, I want to make sure there's nothing else interesting here. Good floor. We're not finding anything. What is this surprise monster house? Grass gummies to the plant. Trap avoider. I've seen like traps like in like a couple mazes in this game. Often avoid stepping on visible traps. But yeah, I think all of them should do that. Like, hello. You really need that much IQ to know, oh hey, big old trap that's obviously visible on the floor. Uh, I should probably not step on that. You really need to be uh, 5,000 IQ before you can make that decision. Okay, we're going through the stairs. Stairs. There appears to be no one here. There is now. We're the boss. Now whenever the other Pokemon try and come down here, they're gonna have to fight us. You're just gonna give up your uh, position at the bottom of the dungeon so easily.
We're just like talking to ourselves now. I don't know what it is about Typhlosion that just amuses me. Big orange volcano badger. So how much money did we end up getting? About 600. Not great. We didn't get a single revive seed. Good for farming grass gummies, though. So let's go put all of our items away. Blast seeds and a lot of chestnuts. I don't know. Waterfall pond. I guess we should do another check to see if we can get more Magma Caverns missions. Try and maximize our efficiency there, but I think I'm going to actually go and do that. Near Magma Cavern. <laughs> One frustration wanted. Oh, believe me, I have plenty. Having one frustration is reassuring. I guess having only one frustration would be reassuring. We're in a Poke Plus mystery. Delivery for Wooper. We'll take it. Actually, do we actually have a frustration? All jokes aside. Yes, Kingis Khan, do we have any frustration in storage? We have two. Perfect. I think we need one of those. And we need a bullet seed. What else do we need? No escort missions, are there? Floor 12, far-fetched, regular rescue. We've got the frustration. Gotta find a Weedle on floor 19. Born a Poke Plus mystery. And Bullet Seed. good for us to bring with us. Actually, do we have any more revive seeds in the store? Nope. Obviously, we want ourselves on our own team. Wait, what? Oh, we need to go south to go to town.
I'll be back in like 30 seconds. And I'm back. I need to get like a like a intermission. Uh, we'll be back soon. Type screen. I can switch to if I need to. I guess that's something I, I still need to set up. I actually did a couple of improvements to my stream, like between like over the weekend. Where I added like a timer at like the start of the stream, like whenever I've got that you know stream starting soon screen. I actually have a timer that countdown counts down from five minutes. But I also found out that a bunch of those uh, people in my chat that don't actually contribute to the viewer count are actually bots. And then it's where the bulk of the spam that I was having issues with was coming from. But it turns out there's actually lists of all of those accounts online, so you can just straight up ban all of them. So I did that, so hopefully we won't have any more spam issues. The whole reason why I blocked URLs a while ago, anyway. Like, like all of them. So, shouldn't have to deal with that anymore. how to make some money here. Yeah, I banned like something like 200 accounts from like, they actually have lists online that you can just copy paste commands over from. If I accidentally ban someone who is not a bot, uh, just let me know. some items together. What do we get? Oh man, what do we get? We're going into the crazy dangerous dungeon and I made the mistake of not being prepared for it last time. We actually got valuable items with us now. I'm thinking no less than like four reviver seeds. Like treat it like an escort mission almost. Wait, what? Which one of what? I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, dungeons? We're going... <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, we're going to go back into the uh, Magma Caverns again, because we got four missions for that. So I'm just going to take a bunch of Reviver Seeds, so I can't screw it up again. It's kind of fitting that, that I lost, like, 
so much on Friday because, you know, it was Friday the 13th. That's so crazy to me. Like, uh, it was Friday the 13th. If it was just like... Then we had like the Blood Moon Lunar Eclipse thing happen. Like, at, like two days later. Like, that would have been so insane if they happened on the same day. They were like that close to happening on the same day. That would have been insane. Take some apples. Yeah, I just think that's funny that it's like, oh, we, were, we had such a successful time on Wednesday with uh, beating the game, and then uh, Friday the 13th happens, and I lose, like, my uh, two missions at the start of the stream before uh, ending up just starting to grind for items, because I realized that the uh, post-game is going to absolutely kick my butt. I was not prepared. Definitely gonna keep an escape orb with us just in case we need to get the heck out. And a warp orb in case we need to uh, disrupt a monster house. Yeah, the downside of bringing a whole bunch of items into a dungeon means that we can't pick up as much because inventory space is uh, a very limiting thing in this game. But it's better to have too much stuff and be too prepared and not be able to pick things up than to be totally unprepared and just, like, die instantly. And then silver spikes are more valuable, so we'll take, like, 20 of those. Barely have any room left. But hopefully... Oh, wait, I, I also want to bring a... Elixir. I think it's funny that there's like only max elixir in this game. There isn't just like regular elixir. I really wish like the apples and seeds and stuff stacked. It doesn't make much sense to me. Each individual reviver seed takes up its own inventory slot. We've got Typhlosion, we've got Venusaur. Uh, we're going in. Maybe a little quick save over here. I kind of like that the, uh, that's so valuable to, to run the Magma Caverns, because I really like the music there. We took all the all the jobs for that too, right? 12, 15, 19, 23. It looks like two of them will will be fine just having the items, so really we just have to care about floor 12 and floor 19. So it was looking for a weedle on floor 19 and finding a far-fetched on 12. Here we go. Let's go ahead and reassign our moves too. Actually, quick quick attack's probably good. I didn't even know apples, like, appeared here. Out of here. Eradicate. Oh, dead end. Naturally.
Yeah, this is like one of the most like lucrative areas to farm for like items and money. But it also goes on forever, so. Either you're going to need to be tough enough to make it to the bottom, or you're going to need to bring an escape orb with you. So, got to make sure you get enough stuff to break even on that. Of course, we're on missions here, so... Don't have to worry about that as much. Because obviously you can just instantly teleport back whenever you finish one of those. Basically, we need to get to 412. I think we're just going to focus more on the mission than trying to farm items. Just because it, it it's so deep of a dungeon that if I just focus on items, we'll run out of food before we get anywhere near the bottom. So we'll just have to pick up whatever we see on our, on our way there. like the one downside of really deep dungeons. This looks like the place to farm sand true as well. Typhlosion right at home. This is basically his friend area. Oh, this is going to be a dead end for sure. We're way too close to the corner of the screen. Uh... Okay, stairs. Kinda of surprised that, that was only 46. This is like an in-game dungeon. Uh, immediately what comes to mind is the Mushroom Forest, uh, friend area music. Uh... Probably the Mount Thunder music. I mean, most, most of the tracks in this game are, are pretty amazing. I'll say that. Like... It's hard to pick favorites when they're all really good. It'd be easier to pick the ones I don't like. Uh. Yeah, I feel like really underrated uh, game soundtrack. Especially the Game Boy Advance version. Oh. We have a lizard merchant. I'm not stealing an item. Let's send the other lizards after us. Some sort of chameleon mafia. I don't know who that lizard knows. Some sort of Pokemon mob. Also, that's mean. You worked so hard to get those items. Maybe pocket monsters, but uh, don't have to be regular monsters as well. There are a lot of spikes in these later dungeons.
check that out. Nido Queen. Oh! You mess with the Nido Queen, you get the Nido King. And then he goes down in one hit. anybody here. Name a Nido Chat. I'll keep that in mind if one decides to befriend us. It doesn't look like any of them can be uh, befriended yet. I guess I still need a lot of friend areas. I have heard that this dungeon is like one of the best ones for farming money though, which we're definitely going to need to buy out all the friend areas. I'm going to actually just continue here. I don't think he came down here with us. He can have the Gravel Rock 3. We're going to floor 12. It's kind of weird that the game has like like the lava where it's like only fire types can walk there because it's like the game's almost encouraging you not to have good type coverage you just have like all the same type so that you can actually move over the lava because if, if you have any other types with you they're not going to be able to walk over that Actually, I don't know if flying types can go over it. I know flying types can go over water, as well as water types. Ghost types apparently can just go through walls. So I guess if you had like a flying... Uh, water ghost type combination, you could all go over the lava. And still actually have some decent... coverage. Oh, the background changed. Arbok picked up with a bullet seed. Oh, heck no. We're gonna have to lose one of those anyway because of this mission. So if I, if I go get that one, we'll actually break even. It wasn't dangerous enough being inside of a volcano, now we have to go after a giant poisonous snake. Intentionally. Oh yeah, for sure. I don't know how much you'd be offset by the whole being a super-powered animal thing. I'd like to think that that would offset a little bit of it. The terrifyingness. It's like, the most terrifying thing that you're gonna find in any of these dungeons is other Pokémon. Eat the apple. Still though, especially if you're a if you're a Venusaur inside of a volcano, you're you're probably not going to be uh, too comfortable. Nice. So actually, we're not going to lose a bullet seed from this mission now. We're already on floor 8, 
so just four more till we reach our first objective. I don't know where all the power points went for that. Where are the stairs? I don't know, I guess the best farming strategy would be to just have like a bunch of super overleveled zigzagoons or something with pickup. Just keep like automatically farming items every floor you go down here. The thing I really need to figure out is if it's still possible to get a meow if we didn't pick them as our partner at the start of the game. Because money is definitely our issue right now. The dupe hasn't been realized yet as of this game's release. Yeah. Well, I think to some extent, 4th gen existed. Because Alakazam was talking about Lucario. And like I said earlier in the stream, uh, I did kind of get spoiled doing some research about how to farm stuff in this game that apparently your Mystery Dungeon team can be a uh, Lucario tier instead of like go like silver, bronze, gold. It can actually say Lucario there. There's like a video I watched, someone had that. And they're playing the Game Boy Advance version. So whenever this game came out, they at least knew Lucario was going to, going to exist. Half hunger. I'm just gonna continue. I wanna focus on the missions because they're gonna give us better rewards. I don't wanna end up running out of food and then getting killed just because there might be an item around a corner. It's not a good not a good gamble. So I just don't know, like, the timing of when this game came out, if it's like, oh, Gen, t Gen 4 had already been announced, but it wasn't out yet. Like, maybe they had, like, the movie that had Lucario in it out or something. They just didn't have the games out. They're at, at the very least aware that Lucario exists in this game. I guess we could go ahead and use an apple. Link boxes are pretty useful. I say, knowing I haven't used one. Lucario and Bleasel were teased before uh, Gen 4 came out. I always felt so bad for Mewtwo. <laughs> they replaced him. Smash 3 and 4. Game Freak be like, I am no longer friends with uh, Mewtwo, Lucario is my friend now. That kicked Mewtwo out. Oh. Our plant friend is a little bit combustible.
More like Sock, right? Yeah. Did I say Game Freak? I'm sorry. Obviously, they didn't, didn't have too much to do with Smash or, uh... There'd be quite a few more Pokemon there. I don't know why Pokemon Tournament didn't take off as much. I wish they'd, they'd like updated it to have like a bigger roster. I say knowing that I only got the game specifically because I could play as the as uh as Blaziken. I've literally never played a character in that game besides Blaziken. I haven't even touched that game in at least two years. No, I can't leave now. I mean, technically, if we did leave now, we would actually have three out of four missions uh, finished. Chandler was broken in the game? Yeah. I think... I don't know the meta around Pokémon Tournament, but I, I have heard Chandler's pretty broken. Okay, so we just gotta get to floor 19 and get uh, Weedle the heck out of here. And we're golden. There'll be four missions at once. The stairs are on our side today. Oh. There's a surprise waiting for us down the stairs. Um, what do I have equipped? Flame wheel? Okay. And there's two. I wonder if they changed, like, the design of, like, the future Mystery Dungeon games? Where you can actually choose which Pokémon's in the lead sooner in the game? Or if they just follow the same formula of... You're stuck as whatever Pokémon you got, you got at the start of the game. Because this kind of forces you, like, like I was saying earlier, uh... In the same way, like, when you don't really know what you're doing and you just stick with your starter, so you end up with, like, one or two Pokémon that are, like, super high level and everything else is, like, really weak at the end of the game, in the main games. Uh, this game kind of forces you to do that. Like, you're always going to end up with, effectively, the over-leveled starter. Oh, right, let me beat it. Type advantage master. But yeah, this this game basically forces you to have the overleveled starter. <laughs> so whenever you go to post game and you want to use other Pokemon, they're all going to be way weaker. We've got four stars of our IQ. This is the smartest fire badger the world has ever seen. Critical hit rate is boosted when attacking foes with a type disadvantage. It's like you have to choose that or quick dodge. I think I went with quick dodge with Venusaur, so I'm gonna go with the with the other one for for Typhlosion. Typhlosion will take more hits, but it'll also do more crits. Five more floors. I do want the gummy. Uh... Decisions, decisions. Can I give this? Yeah. Give the plant the berry to hold on to. 278 poke. We've got a rock. That, that rock just became a pinata.
How convenient. Since you're now unemployed, starting to stream and get the YouTube channel running again. Oh man. Looking forward to seeing you make more videos again. Thinking of starting to stream and get the YouTube channel running again. I'd probably stick with Heartbeat for YouTube, since, I mean, you kind of already started into that. I don't know. I find that RPGs are really good for playing on stream. In general. Also, Flamethrower, that's pretty rare. Uh, let me think about that for a second. Like, RP- like, turn-based stuff is really good for streaming, because you can actually... Like, like, the game gives you some breathing room if you want to, like, talk to your chat or whatever. If it's something that you have to be, like, you know, real-time action, and you have to be, like, super focused all the time, then it's hard to, like, keep on top of, like, what your chat's doing at the same time. But having a game that gives you breathing room... Uh... Also, like, if you don't know what to talk about, you can always, like, explain your strategy and stuff like that. That's always, like, a good topic to default to in RPGs. Or I guess anything strategy-based. I don't know. Generally, what I find works best, like... Probably like retro games that are like people remember super fondly. That there's like a big falling for, but like not a lot of people are playing. Uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team, case in point. Or another thing I, I personally would want to get more into is uh, indie games. There's like a lot of really good indie games out there that just slip through the cracks because, like, especially like Steam is really saturated. So there's a lot of, like, amazing games out there that I'm sure just no one's stumbled across yet. So, that's what I'd probably do. Either, like, well, I mean, that's what I am doing. Uh, like, cult classic retro games and indie games. Especially strategy and turn-based stuff. I don't have any, like, specific titles off the top of my head. Just don't, don't play Elden Ring. Everyone's playing Elden Ring. I made that mistake. I'd love to get more into that game, but it's just I know that if I play it, no one's gonna watch it. Yeah, the sweet spot I've, I've found is, like, 50,000, like, followers on the category on Twitch or higher, but with, like, no one actually streaming it, means that people will probably start showing up. If you, if you actually stream it, and you'll be, like, the only one in that category. Please tell me I have something for dealing with the poison. I don't. Okay, I'm just gonna have to run for it. Stairs. So much I wanna do. Still wanna do Sword and Shield video essay? Oh yeah, I remember you talking about that. Sword Art Online with someone before making it. Uh, well, whatever you end up making, I'm sure it's going to be great. I'll be looking forward to checking it out.
I would volunteer to, to do the uh, sales stuff with you, but uh, I literally haven't seen the show and don't know anything about it, so I don't know how useful my commentary would be. Destroy him. Venusaur, destroy him. Three hundred seven. Overpowered plant. It's cool. Rather, I'd have to suffer through that game. A lot of context I would be missing. Wait, that was super effective and it only did two damage. This volcano badger is uh, indestructible. Yeah, this this game has given me a, like a whole new respect for the Bulbasaur line. Them and Rowlet are the only two starters that have double typing from the beginning. I always just assume that they're all like single type, but I stand very much corrected. Was it 17 or... yeah, it was 19. I need to switch moves to something that I can still use. Oh, wait. Uh, I guess we're using smokescreen. I don't want to waste the elixir. Just use our hold item, or use our throw item, because that's basically a move. There's like a move's worth of damage. I'm kind of... This is probably going to jinx me saying this, but... Uh... Uh, no pun intended, Pokemon-wise. But we haven't seen a monster house yet this run. Maybe that's because I was just heading through the stairs every time instead of, you know, going around looking for items. Also, I didn't know Silver Spikes could do 86 damage. I like how your Pokemon absolutely needs to uh, do a full 360 before they throw the Silver Spike. No scoping the Sand Slash. Good getting all four of these missions done. Definitely running low on uh, Pokemon currency. Especially now that literally all of the friend areas we have to buy are several thousand each. If Venusaur, if, if Typhlosion completely runs out of moves, you can change Venusaur to the leader? Oh, I should be spamming the. Uh, our last move, then. There's so many, like, mechanics in this game that, like... It's really just amazing to me, like, the options that you're, that you're given here. 
sometimes you don't even know about them until like way later. Like, I don't know what you can get IQ wise. Just like permanent, permanent buffs to a bunch of stuff. I know you've been down here for like a week or so. Weedle, you can finally be free. I think for once I actually am gonna leave now. Because knowing my luck, I'll just end up running into uh... I'll just run into a monster house on like the next floor and end up losing everything. So. He got really confused. He, he's really bad with directions. Maybe like a really mean Abra, just like instant transmit, instant transmissioned him into the bottom of the dungeon, and then ran off. Eighty points for Sandrew. Light screen. I think that's pretty, that's like, one of the really broken moves in this game. Lou Gummy. 80 more points for Sandro. Congratulations! Sandro is now gold rank. We did it. Whooper of all Pokemon wanted the frusta frustration. It's very fitting. Also, that's kind of a funny sleeping animation where Typhlosion sleeps sitting up. We are at gold rank now. Apparently it's 1500 to become gold rank. Take my money, cat. Look at how much these friend areas cost. They're like 10,000 each. And these aren't even the ones for the legendary. You can only get the legendary ones as, as rewards for missions. That's some pricey real estate. I think it's funny that I brought four Reviver Seeds and I ended up not using any of them. Let's go ahead and keep a bunch of this stuff. Let's keep... I'm feeling a little bit bold. Let's do a... I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about doing an Escort mission. got a few of them we've already accepted that we need to get taken care of. A couple apples, a couple reviver seeds. I could probably use a couple orange berries. Not like we have a shortage of them. Gotten any new dungeons yet? We do have the one. I don't know if I've been in there yet. I don't remember being there yet. But we do have Waterfall Pond. Uh, which, considering the word water and the word pond, probably not very good for Typhlosion, but... Uh, I'm not sure why to go there yet. Um... 
I'm assuming post-game related type activities. We do still have one more maze with the... Makihita Dojo. These reptilians got any new stock? Not any more reviver seeds. Got Typhlosion and we've got Gold Ring. Now I know that we gotta get Lucario Ring. Magma Cavern. Okay, most of our missions are for Thunder Wave Cave, Silent Chasm, or Uproar Forest. Thunder. Wait, did you not get Solar Cave yet? No, I do not have Solar Cave. I don't know what Solar Cave is. Mr. Woods escort mission. A couple frosty forests. Let's let's go look at our mailbox. Actually, I want to clear as many of those out as possible. Apparently, our mailbox can only hold four letters before it's full to bursting. Medicham anywhere in town? Uh, I've seen them somewhere. Medicham, Medicham. Hanging out over here somewhere? No. Maybe near the post office? Fast explosion in the west? Uh, no. Metacham, Metacham. If I was a Metacham, which is entirely a possibility in this game. Wait, what's he doing over here? It's because the cave opened. Uh, over here? Last place I checked? I kind of swore I saw him over here at some point. Yeah, I guess there is no Metacham in town. I don't know where they went. We got an Alakazam. Who knows about Lucario? Despite... Uh... Despite Lucario not existing yet. When the game came out. Building up his legend. Anyway, I'm going to see if we have any uh, escort missions I can get out of our mailbox, since it only holds four letters. We still don't have any purple gummies, so I can't get rid of that. Um, seventh floor. Delivery of green gummy in the Sinister Woods. We could start gearing up Sinister Woods missions. I think that's what I'm going to do. We don't ex exactly have a shortage of those. Plus, there's a plus mystery in the rewards, which I found out plus question mark could mean plus uh, a friend area that you can only get as a reward from a, from a mission. It's only D difficulty, so probably not, but still. We're going to want to grab a green gummy just to make sure that we can uh, finish that. Oh, no. 
not score. Let me go. Be plenty of attempts for those. Since we have 15. And then, I guess, we'll check to see other missions. Okay, there's a escort to 8th floor. Need a queen. Black gummy. Bring a needle queen to a to a needle king. I'd like to believe that they're a bit tougher than the usual Pokemon, and they won't just die in one hit. But at the very least, we have four reviver seeds on us, so that'll help things be a little bit easier. That's that's always the thing that takes me out is uh, you're escorting a Pokemon that just dies in one hit, and then just like I'm gonna run off and. Go poke Rayquaza with a stick and see what happens. And I don't realize they're gone until uh, we're dead and teleported back to town with all of our stuff missing. Ready. Oh, make sure we actually take these. Escort. We still have three more spaces. So I'm gonna go actually run the last Makahita Dojo, because that'll actually change up what the store has and what the jobs list in front of the post office has. So we might be able to pick up another mission or two for the same area, just for efficiency's sake. Team Hydro. Can I switch to a Pokemon that isn't weak to water? Yeah, let's let's switch back to Venusaur before we do this. Since Typhlosion is allergic to water. It may want a gummy. Uh Pokemon that was at one point ourselves. And quick save, really quick. Even though I don't plan on saves coming. To the Sinister Woods we go. Oh, wait, no, I was going to do the other thing first. Well, we're here now. <laughs> now going to be the Nita Queen secret, secret Service. Okay, so we need to bring... So we only got the two missions, though. So as long as we make it to the 8th floor, we're fine. And I don't think you even have to deal with hail here. So... This actually isn't going to be that bad. Half the time your enemies are pseudo-woodos that don't even move. That one apparently wants to join the cause. I can get like one shot by this when I'm next to him instantly. <laughs> yoink and yoink. Uh, okay. Late. 
And the last room I'm gonna check is gonna be the stair room. This is actually one of the better spots for, like, farming reviver seeds. So even if we didn't have that many missions going in here, we'll... I guess to make it more efficient, since I forgot to do the other thing, uh, just make sure that we find any items in here. Because there actually is, like, a really good drop rate for stuff that we need. Really, the only thing we gotta care, care about is getting Nido Queen to, uh, 4 8. Yeah, we can kind of diverge off, off course a little bit. While he sits there. We have such a level advantage here that we can just basically one-shot anything. So as long as the Neo Queen doesn't uh, get a mind of their own and wander off, we should be good. Grass gummy. Don't you miss? It's not like he moves around a whole bunch. 106 Poke. Typhlosion was just like, don't worry, I got this. Summons the. Uh, Fiery Wrath of the Sun and blast the Oddish from across the map. Oh, he's blocking the stairs. Worst possible place. 322 damage. Yeah, ideally, I guess, I mean, since we're only, like, level 30-something, I imagine if we get closer to, like, level cap, eventually even these escort missions are going to be pretty easy. It kind of amazes me that the game is set up in such a way that you can beat the game, like, not even with your Pokémon at level 30. It really did make me feel like this game was going to be a lot larger than it ended up being. Then again, I mean, we still have all the post-game stuff to go, basically. So... Which apparently is, like, the other half of the game. Sentry detected. Volcano Badger is on top of it, of course. Uh, there's only like one more room that can be here, basically. And that's just a, a through hallway. Let's just go to the next floor. Seriously, has Razor Leaf always been this good? Wait a second. Oh, never mind. Thought we had someone missing there for a second. We're getting them to floor... 8. Halfway there. Out of Razor Leaves.
This actually has me kind of excited for Gen 9, since I've already decided to pick uh, Grass Cat as my starter in that game. To be fair, they're probably going to be pure grass type and not grass poison like Bulbasaur is. But still. I wonder how long it's going to be before we see the final evolutions of the Gen 9 starters. I feel like that's what we really have to wait for before we can make a, a solid decision about who to pick. Grass fighting. Oh boy. I mean... I guess it's better than firefighting again. Don't do it. Don't you don't you touch that needle queen. Don't do it. Are they okay? They're at like half health. Well, like a, a third missing. Okay, so this floor is pretty much done. I feel like they already did grass fighting though, wasn't that the typing of the one, like... Like, they just had that in Gen 8, didn't we? Not the starter, but the other, like, weird grass monkey that appears out of nowhere. I don't know, I haven't played the DLC for Sword and Shield yet. I'd be tempted to play the DLC for Sword and Shield on stream, but it'd be kind of weird since I didn't play the rest of the game on stream. So I'd have to fill everybody in on the... the rest of it. Uh, do I continue here? Decisions, decisions. Also, we've already got more money here than we did in the Fire Dungeon. We can have a rematch? Yeah. Yes, we could. I feel like I understand Pokemon, like, quite a bit better than I did then. Binge watching, like, the videos of, like, Pokemon Showdown on YouTube. It's kind of funny, like, the crazy strategies people come up with. I don't know, I guess that's a big criticism I have with, like, the main Pokemon games, is that they don't ever teach you how to play the game. I mean, they teach you how to play the game in terms of, like, beating the NPC trainers. But they don't prepare you at all for actually going online and fighting other players. Like, especially Sword and Shield, I feel like that was something that Sword and Shield really got wrong, was it made, like, most of the fights throughout the entire game super easy, and then you go online and you get absolutely destroyed, because everybody's playing, like, the competitive meta. But they don't even require you to use hardly any strategy at all in the main game. Like, I literally beat, like, half the gym leaders without even using Dynamaxing, because I didn't need to. I feel like the game should do a better job at, like, forcing you to have to use strategy. Or, like, have, like, different difficulties or something. Please don't touch... Do not touch the Nita Queen. But yeah, it's just, like, you're, you're totally unprepared for it. You go online for the first time, someone's got their crazy... Uh, EV trained, perfect IV, a Dragapult, and they just like sweep your entire team, and you're just like, I don't even know what happened, because I was just, uh, I was doing amazing against the NPCs, like the regular trainers. If you're from the perspective of someone who's like new to Pokemon games, I mean. 
Like, if that's someone's first Pokemon game, they're gonna be completely unprepared for fighting other trainers online. I feel like they could definitely be doing a better job at preparing people for the actual strategies actual players use. I mean, they have the data. They have to have the data. Full health. Two more floors to go. Remember when you played Pokemon Black for the first time, did a random online battle, and got destroyed by this guy with a Japanese name? It's almost like a rite of passage for uh, playing a Pokemon game that has online functionality. Going online thinking you're good at the game and then getting absolutely destroyed. Someone half the world away. How are we doing on hunger? Still half. Okay, we've got the stairs, but I want to make sure that we find any items because I want to be as efficient as possible here. Okay, I'm gonna assume that there's basically nothing left on the right side of the floor. That loops to nowhere. Well, that looks like it's two paths that connect through. Yeah. So I'll check this corner, I guess. Hornberry. White gummy. Don't really need Nornberry. I guess I'll use the apple. And this should just connect right back through to the stairs. This should be our uh, Needle Queen delivery floor. We started in the correct room. Hello, sir. I think you may have you may have been uh, looking for this. Would I like to leave now? I think there's only like a couple more floors, and now that we have the pressure off. Actually, yeah, it's probably more efficient to go ahead and leave. Immediately get the rewards. And then we have... Wait, where's the, where's the delivery? What just happened? Did I have to actually reach a certain floor for it to actually trigger that? Deliver one green gummy. Oh! I thought it was one of the ones where you just have to find one and give it to them. This is one where the actual Pokemon to turn it into was in the dungeon. I didn't realize. Well, that's fine, because we probably want to get more uh, Sinister Woods. Uh, jobs anyway, because, again, really high drop rate for useful items. Like, that's where I found, like, the most Reviver Seeds, just randomly. And they have, like, actually decent money drops for the difficulty. So... I guess we'll just, uh, do that when we go back in.
Either way, it's still nice to get rid of the escort mission. Because I, I, I really don't like escort missions. And that gave us a silver gummy delivery on Mount Freeze. How do I opt out of these spam mails? Blue gummy, blue gummy. Orange berries. We only need two. Reviver seeds. I'm only going to take two if we're not in an escort mission. Okay, we got the throwing item, we got the healing item, we got the spare lives, we got the spare moves, and we got the escape strategies. Are we missing anything? I don't think so. Fresh jobs. Couple mount steals. Please help Typhlosion. Mount Freeze, Frosty Forest. An A grade difficulty Sky Tower escort mission. Haha, <laughs> no thank you, miss me with that. Oh, this has a Reviver Seed as a reward. Do we have anything else for Mount Thunder? No. Uh... Okay. We are the Venusaur. Let's go grab a friend and go to the, uh... Dojo. Like I was trying to do before I accidentally entered the, the last mission. Who we got? Is Absol any good? Dark type pressure. Force foes to use more power points. Kinda useless against NPCs that appear all the time. We gotta go with the type lotion. Well, I mean, it's Team Hydro. Maybe, maybe just stay in, in your volcano there. He seems to be having a nice day without having to deal with the water that he's allergic to. So I guess we should use... what? Probably Bampy? 16... 15... Oh yeah, Tropius is a good idea as well. I'm gonna bring the Bampy because it has pickup, so it's free items. Oh wait, you're right. You haven't played this game in, in ages? Me neither. Honestly, I never beat the game before, uh, like two days ago. Or two streams ago. I still have no clue what, what all is in store for us for the post game, but I know that it has a big post game. So I'm mostly gearing up for that. Just got gold rank today. Yeah, we're gonna bring the Tropius. Long nose Pokemon. Yeah, it's ground type. 
So I guess this is the situation where Zigzagoon is superior. Even though Zigzagoon is half health. Because then we won't have to deal with water. Wait. Static paralysis attackers. Uh, but they're only like level 7. I need to get some other Pokemon actually uh, up to a high enough level to be useful. Tropius is good because we got him at the end of the game though. So it might be late to the story, but I'm all for what's left. Glad to hear it. Yeah, apparently there is a pretty s substantial uh, post game in this game. Tropius blends right in. It still amuses me to no end that he can fly with the giant banana leaves. And then I'm gonna get Sand True, not Sand True. Uh, I'm gonna get the Zigzagoon for pickup. Which I should have been using the whole game, but I, I totally forgot that, that was even a thing. Maybe I should bring some items. I mean, we're, we're, we're good. We're good to go. And technically, that is like the last uh, Makahita Dojo maze that we have versus Team Hydro. Oh, thanks for the follow, Sir Gavo the Gavo Bro. Zigzagoon found an item. Hornberry. Yeah, there's basically no reason not to have either Zigzagoon, Linoon, Vampy, or I think Teddy Ursa on your team, because they all get pickup, so you get like a free item every floor, pretty much. Got lucky with these stairs. Now the one thing is that the boss floor doesn't give us an item with pickup, but still. The other two floors will give us something. So theoretically, if you have like a whole team of Zigzagoons or Pokemon with pickup, and you run through these missions a whole bunch of times, you can farm items really fast. Yeah, I saw a YouTube video about this. I was doing a little bit of research about how to efficiently farm items in the game. And, uh... Yeah, basically, like, whatever the type of the maze you go into, it actually can determine, like, the type of, like, items that you get. Like, if you go into the fire maze and you have Pokemon to pick up, they're gonna probably pick up, uh, fire gummies, or the, the red gummies for instance, or like the water dungeons will give you wa uh, the blue gummies instead. Didn't know it could ever be useful. <laughs> yes, he's good for things other than just uh, the quote-unquote HM slave in the main games. Yeah, he's actually pretty useful in this game because of pickup. Because you go through items like crazy, that can seriously be the uh, deciding factor between winning or losing a mission. Oh yeah, I remember these guys are like the toughest ones. I forgot about that. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, Zigzagoon might might run into some issues here. But still, we got Razor Leaps. I 
think this is the only one of the uh, dojo boss battles that has ever uh, I've lost to. So need to be very careful here. I did bring revive seeds, and Zigzagoon's gonna use all of them probably. Oh, Trophy's used one. Oh. Well, traded one for one. And now I need a revive seed, and they've used them all. Great. Guess we have to orn berry. And get leech seed going. Yeah, this is this is not looking too good. Oh, whirlwind. That's that's big. Uh If we could just get like poison powder going. Cuz like the high defense of the Blastoise is going to be a serious issue for us. As much as we can whittle him down. Oh man, I really need to give Tropius some health. Uh... Hopefully I can just take out the Feraligator pretty quickly. Oh, I meant to use Razor Leaves there. That... that's a mistake. Oh. Yeah, I should have probably brought way more, uh, Revive Seeds. And there went all half of our items. Rip. And this is why we need to do a bit more farming. You do you appear not to have any money. I know. Okay, so what do we have in terms of missions so I can earn everything back? Quick run through Mount Thunder. Rescue urgently needed. Oh, accidentally took that one. Uh, new queen. I guess we're doing a Mount Thunder run. Six, seven, and eight. Regular missions. Do you have anything else for Mount Thunder? Good job. I don't know why you have to do that twice. Like, you, you accept the mission, but then you also have to take the mission. See if we have any in our mailbox so we can be as efficient as possible. Yeah, they're gonna be a, a bit tough. And we don't have any more for Mount Thunder. But Mount Thunder is pretty easy. So, should be able to just sweep right through that. We do have one Reviver Seed in stock. Need to buy as many of those as possible because they're basically the item that. Uh, gates off our ability to continue. Because, I mean, it's literally an extra life.
Okay, we got the revive seed, and we lost two. We gained one back. I shouldn't need that much stuff for Mount Thunder. I don't want an escape orb. It's just like the emergency eject button. Warp Orb in case of monster houses, but they're pretty rare in that dungeon. Max Elixir in case we run out of moves. Second Reviver Seed, just in case. There's basically no reason we shouldn't have at least two Reviver Seeds at all times. A couple orange berries and something to throw when we run out of moves. Let's go with silver spikes because we got a lot of them. And they I think they do the highest damage of any that we have right now. Oh, and food of course. Man, I really wish that they would let you, like, take multiple items at once. Oh, you say, well, cool, you plan on doing VTuber stuff down the line, eh? Started doing that recently, say it's totally worth the grind? Yeah. Yeah, I really am thinking about doing that. I think it would be... Like, I don't want to be microphone only. But I feel like I'd be better able to express myself with, like, a VTuber, like, avatar instead of, like, a webcam. So, I don't know, I pretty much kind of know what, what I want to do with, like, a character, but I haven't commissioned anything yet. I'm, I'm still a bit nervous about it, because I've never, like, commissioned a VTuber avatar before or anything like that. And there's, like, a lot of stuff I don't know about, like, how to make the software actually work, so I've got a lot more research to do. But, yeah, I'd like to go that way eventually, because I feel like that would add a lot. Be able to, like communicate my reactions to things, other than just vocally. Yeah, just a few more things I got, I've got to wait on before I can get that hooked up. Okay, so we're doing the Mount Thunder Run. We've got Tropius, but we also want our good friend Typhlosion Explosion. Yeah, it's really cool what some people do with the whole VTuber thing. Like where you can make it like, like have like different like interactable like elements and stuff. I think it's just like super cool, but I still have a lot of stuff to learn. A lot of research I need to do. Like I know Live 2D Cubism specifically, I don't know if I'm going to go with that or not, but I know that it has like a whole API. Because I, I know some programming stuff. So, potentially I could, like, hook some stuff up, like, some really cool, like, interactive stuff for this dream. Eventually. I wish I was, like, a, like a good artist so I could, like, draw my own avatar. But, unfortunately, I, I cannot draw. <laughs> Wasn't too crazy to learn. Yeah, it seems like the process is pretty straightforward. Like, where everything's, like, just in its own layer. And it's basically just, like... Uh, 
like warping each of the elements to create the illusion of like things being 3D. Yeah, it's super interesting to me. I, I just looking at like different like VTuber like avatars and stuff. I like the motion tracking for that. I feel like it's more precise than like a 3D model. Cause that's that's really important to me. It's like the accuracy of the motion tracking. Cause if I'm, if I'm gonna do it, I want to do it right. Sinosaur, Sunflora, and Nidoqueen. Six, seven, eight. Part of its nerves too, because I've never like commissioned art or anything like that before. I don't really know what to expect. You know, I know, I know people do that sort of thing all the time. I keep checking Fiverr for like listings for people who do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a lot more time for doing this stuff this summer if uh, everything I'm working on goes to plan. So I'm definitely planning on going like more into like, uh, like streaming, like spending more time working on streaming stuff and YouTube. Like this summer, I'm planning on getting way more into it. Yeah, like whoever you go with, like. Whatever, you know, comes out at the end of that process, it's like how you're going to represent yourself on the internet in front of everybody. So, you, you definitely want things to turn out right. So, I, I think it's definitely worth it to, you know, weigh it and make sure that I've, you know, found someone who's got, like, exactly the sort of art style I'm looking for. Unfortunately, it seems like as it becomes more popular to do, to do the VTuber thing, there's like more people showing up all the time who actually do that sort of thing. So we're getting like a lot more options as time goes on. Dinosaur. Wait a second. Both Tropius and Venusaur are plant dinosaurs. I just realized Tropius is basically a banana Venusaur. One second, guys. We we've got we got a bot. I banned like 200 accounts over the weekend. Ah oh, man. Banned. They still keep coming. Yeah, there's actually lists. Like if you see like. It would be like the middle of the night, 
you're not even live or anything, and you've got like seven different channels that are just sitting in your chat doing nothing. They're, they're always bots. You can you can double check by looking their names up online. Uh, they have lists of these bots, so I actually took one of those lists and I just started like banning them. Because that's actually where a lot of these like spam, uh, go to my scam website, totally buy followers and totally not get ripped off. Uh, websites are coming from. It's really annoying too. Sometimes they'll wait till you're like right on the final boss of a game or something, and then that's when they they start spamming. Really wish Amazon would do something about them. Yeah, me too, right? I'm just like, oh, they're not chatting, but they're still there, so they're at least watching, right? Not realizing that they don't even actually contribute to the viewer count. Then a lot of the times, if you actually follow, like, if you actually click on their names and you go to their account, it'll just, like, automatically be, like, playing ads. It's like what they're hoping you'll do is you'll go to their page so they can just automatically serve you ads. But yeah, you can you can totally just look up like lists of at least the more well-known bots and just you know basically ban all. Pidgeotto picked up Toxic. I need that. I need it. Where are you at, poison bird? Because this is still back when, like, basically every Pokemon could learn Toxic. What was it, Sun and Moon, that they made it so that hardly any Pokemon could do that anymore? Even ones that totally should still be able to use Toxic? Uh like Umbreon. The Pokedex literally says that Umbreon has, like, poisonous sweat. But Umbreon still can't use Toxic. Yeah, I think after like Gen 6 or 7, they're just like, way too many Pokemon can use this move and it's way too good, so we're gonna make it so hardly anything can use it. So now it's pretty much just poison types that can learn Toxic. Which to be fair, it was kind of overplayed, especially if you look at like competitive formats, but I think they went a little too overboard with uh, trying to balance it. A goal on 4-4? Four, four. No, it's 6. Is this the pigeon question? Yes, it is. Yoink. Of course, this game came out, what, like 2005, 2006? So this is well before they, they nerfed Toxic. Or at least restricted it. As far as I know, it's still really good on Pokémon that can use it, it's just a lot less Pokémon can. Uh, so 6, 7, 8? Yes. There's a Sizor on the next floor that needs a rescue. slowly moving past out over there. The yellow kid just, like, pushing the bee drill back up the hallway. Is the 
first Pokemon game you owned? That that is an in interesting introduction to the series. Yeah, it used to be really really good strategy. Totally broken. Then again, what do I know? I literally didn't know that uh, Bulbasaur was part poison type until I uh, became a Bulbasaur in this game. I always just assumed that the starters were always just like single type. But no, apparently Bulbasaur and uh, Rowlet are the two that are actually double type from the beginning. Because I never picked them. Like, obviously I was going to go with Charmander. No offense to uh, Bulbasaur fans. Like I said, this game showed me that, uh... Definitely... Definitely didn't give Bulbasaur enough credit. Especially in this game, because I remember, like, poison being super annoying in this game, like, when I played it, like, over a decade ago. But because, you know, if you're if you're part poison type, or entirely poison type, you're completely immune. So, basically I've been going through the entire game completely immune to poison. And that's been great. Sizer, you no longer need to fear. You're safe now. Again, I don't know why they didn't just... Whenever people, or whenever Pokemon go out into the Mystery Dungeons, they don't just take a Mystery Dungeon badge with them so they can just teleport themselves. Have, like, some, like, guards in front of the entrance to the Mystery Dungeon and be like, okay, you gotta have an escape orb if you're going out there. There you go. Never need a rescue again. Good for this floor. Yeah, since we found a size already. Next. Sunflora. There's like all these Stantlers here. That was so weird with Pokemon Legends Arceus that they actually gave Stantler an evolution. I never thought that I would see the day. It's like if they gave Delibird an evolution. Honestly, I, I'm glad to see it. Like, Pokemon from like, second generation, third generation. Actually getting some love for once. Like Game Freak always focuses on uh, Gen One, and then whatever, whatever the least, whatever the last generation was. That's always what they focus on. Other than you know, current generation. Dunsparce. It's Dunsparce. Ah uh, yes, Gligar, the other Zubat.
Where are the Sun Flora at? Why are they even here? This doesn't look like any place the Sun Flora would want, would want to be. Like deep in a cave away from the sun? But why are they even here? Oh? Gligar acquired. Tropius picked up the apple. He has the power of apples and bananas on his side. One more rescue to do. We ascend. Your destination is on your right. I wish we would get one of these guys on our team. Manectric. couldn't decide if they wanted to make a sheep or if they wanted to make a giraffe, so they're just like, yes, both. Both is good. Max elixir and dead end. What are we looking for on this floor again? Need a queen. Recruiting completely random? Uh, I think it is random as long as you have the friend area for them. Because you need somewhere for them to actually be able to go. Uh, so in order for them to be an option, you have to have the friend area open. But other than that, I think it is just totally random. You can check it though. If you go to like this to the recruitment search thing like right now the only Pokemon we can pick up is Gligar so you can at least check which Pokemon you can pick up and naturally you're, you're only able to have four Pokemon on your team so you need to have an empty space available it seems like the, the more empty spaces you have uh, the higher the odds are just uh, what I've seen. There have been times where I'll just like go into a mystery dungeon with nothing but a single apple and then I come out with a full inventory of stuff and like three extra Pokemon that joined on. Yeah, that's kind of one thing that I really need to work on right now in the game, is opening all the friend areas. You actually can befriend legendaries, apparently, but it's it's the odds are just really, really low. But it does actually scale uh, with level. So apparently if your Pokemon like goes all the way up to like level 100, then you have something like a 25% chance of recruiting them. like at best, but it starts at like a negative value, so if you're too low level, it's it's literally impossible. And pretty much the friend areas you need to, to even recruit the legendaries are only given as rewards for like difficult missions. So that seems to be the tricky part, is actually getting the friend areas open for them to go to. And that was the last one for here, so I'm gonna go ahead and teleport out. Yeah, theoretically, if you opened up all the friend areas for the legendaries, and you had like max level 
Pokemon, you could just go around and uh, be friends, and therefore also become uh, any of the legendaries in the game. Oh, we finally got a purple gummy. That means I can finally take care of that one quest that's been stuck in our uh, mailbox. I swear the purple gummy is like the rarest one. It's always the one they want for some reason. 20 points for Sam True. I wish I knew a better way to, like, farm revive seeds. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool if you had, like, a... Like, a mystery dungeon... Like, a, like a rescue team that was just legendaries. What? The ones that we've seen so far? Uh, Moltres, Zapdos, Articuno, Groudon. I think you can get Rayquaza. Yeah, it seems like they do consistently appear. If you go to like the uh, like the place where you fight them originally in the main story, uh, at least Moltres, Zapdos, and Articuno I know are still there, and you can challenge them as many times as you want. I accidentally found that out the hard way at the previous stream when I went to the place where Articuno was and they, they were still waiting there for me. <laughs> Pokemon are only like level 30 something, so I don't think our odds are that good, even if we did have the right area. I definitely want to get at least one. I would like to do all of them. Uh, Also, this, this game clearly existed in like the time frame when we knew about Lucario, but Gen 4 games weren't out yet. So it's like they're like trying to hype him up a little bit in this game. I don't know if that's like the highest rank you can go, because there are ranks above gold rank. I saw in someone's... it kind of got... Uh, I noticed that on someone else's YouTube video that they had Lucario rank instead of gold rank. So I don't know if that's like the highest level. But I, I want to get there as well. Um, I think it is Mount Freeze. I think Mount Thunder, Mount Freeze. And then there's like a, a fire one as well. Are the ones that have Moltres, Aptos, and Articuno. Yeah, I do want to go for the legendaries if I can. We're going to need a lot more revive seeds, because it seems like the best rewards come from... Uh, yeah. We, we sure hope you like Lucario, because there's going to be a lot of him soon. I don't know if, like, the movie was coming out soon or something? Because I know Lucario got his own movie. Just, like, completely stealing the spotlight from you two. these reptilians have uh, revived seeds for us? Nope. 
I mean, it, it seems like it worked. The the whole Lucario uh, strategy to turn him popular. Yeah, they didn't get Mewtwo back in, in Smash until, like, I think he was a DLC fighter for Smash 4. I don't know. I didn't play Smash 4. I was in... I was dealing with some, like, college stuff during the whole Wii U generation, and, like, the 3DS stuff, so I kind of missed out on a lot then. But yeah, I know that they replaced him in Brawl, but everybody was back in Smash Ultimate. Yeah, you had to wait till like, for, like, DLC in Smash 4, I think, to even see Mewtwo again. I think he's a playable character in, uh, Pokémon Tournament as well. I know Lucario is, of course Lucario is. I don't know, I, I used to have, like, mixed feelings about Lucario where I'm like, uh, seems kind of overhyped, but kind of grew on me over time. Yeah, they actually brought it back for the Switch, uh, Pokémon Tournament DX. Which I have, but I haven't touched in like two years. Which I mainly got because you can play as Blaziken in that game. I always wish that they would make Blaziken playable in, uh, like regular Smash. Because he's like, oh, he's the original firefighter. All the other firefighters were basically copying Blaze again. That and Sapphire was like the game I spent the most time in Pokemon wise. And Blaziken was my starter and was the only Pokemon before Gen 8 that I got to level 100. I could like destroy the entire Elite Four with just him. I think I want to try out the new, uh, I haven't been to Waterfall Pond yet, so I'm going to get a team together for that. I'm like, maybe I don't want to bring Typhlosion with us, since there's like two references to water and Typhlosion is deathly allergic to water. Um, what else do I have access to? Tropius for sure. Because they're like level 28, so they're actually really good. So we picked them up in literally the last dungeon of the game. Well, the main game. Do you like the plant squad together? What else is good against water types? Or at least isn't bad against water types. I would take. We, we don't really have any electric types that are super high level. A fighting type wouldn't be bad. Once I beat it, kind of lost interest. Yeah. I mean, at the time, like. That was like the best. Pokemon game I had access to. And then I never actually beat Diamond and Pearl until I actually beat the remake on stream like a couple months ago. Uh, Harris might be the choice. Level 11? Eh. Yeah, I basically skipped generations 5, 6, and 7. But then, you know, Gen 8, it's like, oh, this is gonna be the first Pokemon game on the, like, for like a big screen. So, I, of course, I had to come back for Sword and Shield. And I, I still don't know if that was the right choice. 
Is the remake any good? I would say so. I mean, there's definitely things they could have done better, but I don't know, for what it was. I know the art style was controversial, but it's like... Uh, I feel like doing it that way with like the chibi art style is a lot more accurate to like what like the sprites originally looked like. It kind of feels like the remake for... Uh, what was it? Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Switch? Where they kind of went with like a weird art style, but it was like more true to like the original's designs. Um, but yeah, I feel like if you if you liked regular Diamond and Pearl, you'd probably like the remakes. Of course, they they brought back like the uh, the great the great underground. Like the mining minigame. Like the secret bases and stuff. Yeah, even though we don't have any missions, I'm gonna go to the new dungeon. Just to check it out. To enter this dungeon, the team must have a Pokemon with a move waterfall. What? have the hidden machine waterfall. Oh. Yeah, I don't I don't think Venusaur learns waterfall. I didn't even know that there are dungeons like that in this game. Um So let's say, hypothetically, I were to store everything so I have nothing to lose. And I try and rush through that last dojo again. Yeah, there's a lot of people kind of poking fun at the at the remake because it does allow you to do like diagonal movement. And you can kind of tell the original game wasn't designed with the possibility of you doing that in mind. Like, there's, like, one glitch you can do in the ice gym that lets you, like, bypass most of the puzzle for that dungeon to get straight to the gym leader. Uh, I tried doing it, though, and it wasn't as easy as people made it look. So they, they probably could have spent a little bit more time, like, playtesting and debugging it, but still, I would say it's pretty accurate to the original. Tropius. An apple saved is an apple earned. All right, we're rushing the uh, the dojo. Yeah, I think that was because Sword and Shield, like, they didn't have their A-team working on it. Like, their A-team was working on the... that other game, uh, what was it, like, Little Town Hero or something? Which, I kind of feel for Game Freak, because, you know, they probably don't want to be just known for Pokémon. But at the same time, it's like... How are they going to put up their B-team on the first 3D Pokémon game? You just know that's why the animations weren't that weren't that good, or they didn't have all the Pokemon in from the from the beginning. Like if they had their A team working on that, they would have totally uh, been able to do more with the development time. Also, there's traps in this dungeon. This is like the only dungeon I've seen traps in. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of worried about Gen 9, because, like, it's coming out this year. They just released Pokémon Legends Arceus early th earlier this year, and now they're already giving us Gen 9 later this year. 
So I'm, I'm definitely going to weigh it and see how the reception is before getting that one. Just a little bit worried. 300. I mean, Nintendo has definitely been, in general, really good about, like, oh, we're not sure if this game is going to be good when it comes out, so we're going to delay the release to make sure we get it right. Like, that's the whole reason why we don't have Metroid Prime 4 right now, is because they were, they were unhappy with the state of the game, so they literally just scrapped it, started over from scratch with the original team. So... But it seems like Game Freak in particular, I don't know if they're going to do the same sort of thing, or if they're just going to push out Gen 9 before it's ready. Alright, we need to take care of... I think we're going to have to wait and do Blastoise last. Here. Uh, still, I could probably get a Razor Leap out. Gonna have to be really careful with this. Poison powder to get... Uh... Yeah, as much as I'd love to believe that Gen 9's gonna be, like, the greatest Pokemon game so far, it's gonna have all the graphical fidelity of uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus. I mean, it's obviously built in the same engine. Oh, they're totally gonna bring Megas back, and they're gonna, you know, have all the Pokemon in the game from the start, and... It's, it's going to be the game that everyone hopes it's going to be. I, I just, I wouldn't count on that. Especially after Gen 8. Like... I'm just going to... I think it's the smartest to just wait and see. I mean, I think pre-ordering is in general like a bad idea. Because you, you don't know what you're going to get. Trying to focus on uh, getting Swampert out of here. Oh, this is the winning strategy because Paris can like stun. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I like the last couple Pokemon games. I'm kind of weirded out because it's like instead of focusing on just improving the base game, they keep doing these weird gimmicks. And I'm just like, why not just make the base game better? Like, there's so many, like, quality of life improvements that Gen 3 had versus, like, previous generations. And they just kept that stuff in there permanently. And the game's just, like, Pokemon games are just better now because of innovations that Gen 3 made. But now that's just like, oh, we're gonna do Megas, we're gonna do Dynamaxing, we're gonna do Z-moves. Like... Why not just make systems that are going to be in the game, like all the games going forward? That just make Pokemon better, like permanently, going forward. They were scared of Megas becoming stale? Like, I feel like Megas, you could just have them as like a permanent, like, this is just in all games going forward. Oh, Arctic is cringing. <laughs> That's the worst status effect in the game. I got a bad case of the cringe. And then I die. Relatable. This is why I put all my items away, because now we don't lose anything. Yeah, we're just gonna need to be overleveled for that. You're scared of Megas becoming stale. Like, why don't they just keep Megas in, make more Megas, and just like skip the whole Z move thing?
Oh yeah, Paper Mario. I feel like that has to be like internal, uh, internal squabbles at Nintendo, responsible for Paper Mario. By the way, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about playing Bug Fable, or Bug Fables on stream, because it's like a spiritual indie successor to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I think that'd be a really cool game to check out. It's gonna be kind of long though. Gimmicks are better for broad marketing appeal. I, I mean, I suppose so, but I mean... It's like... It's not really gonna help any future games out. Like, they already said Dynamaxing was gonna be Galar region only. It's just like, wow, here's this cool thing that we're going to do one time and then never again. Until we get the Gala remakes, I guess. Actually, what happens if I just take a single apple and I try and run through the last dungeon of the game? I want to see what items I can farm doing that. Because that's like one thing I'm trying to figure out is what's the best way to farm items. So I'm going to take a single apple, so it'll last a lot longer. Since we'll need one for about every like four floors, and I'm going to assume we'll, we'll at least pick up one or two. That's the only item we have to lose, so we have all that inventory space to gain. Then I'm just gonna like rush like the last dungeon of the game and see what we pick up. Maybe it's a good idea to bring an escape orb in case we get really in trouble, that way we can keep the stuff that we earn. Nah, I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah. To enter this dungeon, the team must have a Pokemon with the move fly. It didn't need the move fly before. What? Okay. Uh. What's like the highest level area I can I can rush through? Lapis Cave is good for blue stuff. Um. Sinister Woods is good. I guess Upper Forest, right? Then we can get grass gummies too, so we can make our plant extra smart. And it's not so deep that we won't uh, be able to survive with just one apple. Not that that matters, because we just immediately found another apple, which means we're going to be good on hunger the entire time. Imagine if Nintendo pulled a Sonic Mania, let fans make the mainline Pokemon game. Don't don't get my hopes up like that. Okay. Franchise is at the mercy of the suits. I mean, it makes sense. It is literally the most profitable franchise in human history. They they definitely want to keep that the case. So they're going to be more protective with it than they would, you know, like Legend of Zelda or something. Like you can take risks with a with a like a Metroid game or something like that. But if you take too much risks with the Pokemon and you lose the fans, uh, Nintendo's in trouble. <laughs> fan-made Pokemon games get taken down. I mean, most fan game- most fan Nintendo games get taken down. Unfortunately. Because they're still operating like it's the 1990s, and people are gonna actually make 
the mistake of thinking that a fan game is like an official game and they're going to be responsible for it or something. Like, hello Nintendo, the internet exists. You don't have to be so strict anymore. I mean, I get it, they saved the entire industry by being strict about quality control and, you know, keeping a tight grasp on their intellectual property. But it's not the 90s anymore. Yeah. I guess that's true, Pokemon has more varied games. Scare their fans, make better games than them. I mean... They have done that before, though. Like, AM2R, uh... It's like a lot of Pokemon... or not Pokemon. A lot of really good fan games out there. Yeah, Pokemon has a lot of spin-offs, but they're not gonna... Uh, at least with the mainline games, they're gonna be really protected. I mean... We'll compare it to, like... Mainline Legend of Zelda games. Not spin-off Zelda games, mainline Zelda games. Look what they did with Breath of the Wild. What a massive departure that was from your typical Zelda game. Completely throwing out core staples of the series. And it still ended up becoming extremely popular. I mean, I'm sure part of that is just due to the popularity of the Switch overall. But, like, they would never have taken such huge, like, design changes with a Pokemon game unless it was a spin-off. Yeah, Wind Waker was li literally, like, one of my favorite games growing up. I know a lot of people gave it a lot of criticism at the time because of the art style, and they're like, oh, it's, you know, whatever, cell shading. But now it's just, like, it's aged super, super well. Everyone loves it. I still enjoy watching, like, randomizer races and stuff for Wind Waker. That's, that's one of those games that I know well enough that I'd probably do pretty well at, like, a randomizer race. Because I know where, like, like, I have, like, a photographic memory of that game at this point. Because I beat that game so many times as a kid. There's just some of those games, you know, where it's like, you've played it so long that, like, if you, like, gave me, like, a stack of papers and a pencil and told me to, like, draw every map from the game from memory, I'd, I'd probably do a pretty good job of it. And yeah, that was a massive uh, departure from how the series usually was. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't always work out, but I mean... It's really important to take those risks because sometimes you find... Uh, changes that just make the game fundamentally better, that are worth keeping around going forward. Like, I don't know how I feel about Breath of the Wild being, like, like, I don't particularly care for the dungeons, but if all, like, Breath of the Wild games going forward, or all, like, Zelda games going forward had, uh, open world overworlds, I'd be, I'd be totally okay with that. I feel like that works really well. I 
do wish they'd bring back the traditional dungeons and item-gated content, though. Again, sun and moon. Oh, Rosalia wants to join. Plant friends. Sun and Moon tried to depart from gym leaders. See, I didn't play Sun and Moon, so... Monster House. Man, I wish I had Typhlosion with me. <laughs> He'd just, like, flamethrower his way through this whole, whole area. I'm sure eventually problems people had with Sun and Moon, they're gonna they're gonna probably turn around on that and be like, actually it was better than we remembered it. I mean, I, I, like I said, I never played it, but that's usually what happens. Maybe that's why they keep doing gimmicks, is because they want to, uh... They want to do new stuff, but they're afraid to make any, like, permanent changes to the Pokémon formula. So they just do, like, temporary one-offs instead. So, if people don't like it, they can be just like, oh, no, no, never mind. Next generation won't have this. I never got too much in a TF2. I did beta test Overwatch, actually. Back in, uh, summer of 2016. And I'm like, oh, this game is fun, but it's clearly just, like, uh, a polished TF2. So, I'm like, surely Overwatch is gonna go free-to-play at some point. So I'm not going to pay $60 for it. I'll just wait for it, for it to go free to play. And it never did. Yeah, well, I mean, all the 3D Marios are basically... Uh, Super Mario 64, but with a gimmick. Like, Sunshine was Super Mario 64 with jetpack physics. Galaxy was uh, Super Mario 64, but space physics. Odyssey was Super Mario 64, but you can control enemies sometimes. They're basically just Super Mario 64, but increasingly better graphics and a new gimmick. I guess if you, if, if you got a game company to that point, you probably don't want to dilute your own games. But it's like... Would anyone really mind if they just straight up made, like, Super Mario 64 2? And just have, like, normal Mario mechanics without a gimmick? I'd play the heck out of that. I feel like really creative level design and a good story would totally make up for not having some, you know, gimmicky novelty mechanic.
Can you Im imagine if they did that though, or they're just like... Well, actually, they did that with Super Mario Galaxy, now that I think about it. They did a Super Mario Galaxy 2. So, I, I totally think they could do, like, Super Mario 64 2. Or... Super Mario Sunshine 2. Of course, that'd be a bit... That'd be a bit hard to do. Because, like, obviously a big part of Super Mario Sunshine is that Flood had, you know, different pressure levels of water because the GameCube controller had analog triggers instead of just digital, like, clicky buttons like pretty much every other uh, console's LNR, bu LNR buttons are. So they would need a system with, with analog triggers to capture the feel of the original. I don't know. Maybe whatever console is the uh, Switch predecessor. I feel like it's only a matter of time before they, they announce uh, the next Switch. Since the average Nintendo console lives for about seven years, and the Switch came out in 2017, sell it to us for like 75. Honestly, I'm kind of amazed that they haven't like tried increasing the price of things with inflation going up like it is. As much as it's fun to like blame the gaming companies for like like Sony for charging $70 for a game, that $70 today probably doesn't go as far as $60 did, you know, 10 years ago. I understand why they do it. And the other Rosalia is running off. Games are 90. Oh man. Yeah, I hear things are kind of crazy up there. Which one's worse? Canadian dollars or Australian dollars? Because I know that their games are super expensive too. Canada be like, we got Pokemon centers, but for people. You just go in, they, they, they push a few buttons, you hear some beeping, and you're back to full health. out of inventory space, which is great because we came in here with only an apple. And we're coming out with three friends and a full inventory. It's true when you think about it. Like, the Pokemon world is basically like, you know, Socialist, uh, solar punk utopia. Okay. 
when healthcare is free and everything is so safe, you can let your 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 ten year old travel the world without worrying about it. Mega Drain. I want it. How much? Inflicts damage on the target, restores HP based on damage inflicted. Uh, so that's... Oh, this is Rosalia, so... But Absorb. I think Mega Drain's just better Absorb. I got confused, I'm like, is this Venusaur? Pretty sure Venusaur already had the chance to learn that. Uh oh. Monster House. I guess we're gonna need to find some more water types so we can actually get a Pokemon with Waterfall so we can go to that new dungeon I haven't been to before. Um, Leech Seed the Mankey. Venus the Venusaur is just gonna tank everything. Do not touch my new flower friends. Monkey ball. One V seven. Seems fair. A little bit, uh, imbalanced against them. Yeah. I just know that if they get to them, they're gonna probably one-shot, like, the Rosalias, since I just picked them up. So I'm just like, as long as I stand here, they can't get to them. Because we're, like, level 30-something. We're just, like... Impenetrable plant force field blocking the hallway. It makes sense that Venusaur would be super tanky. I mean, look at him. And they don't take leech seeds. So, we're just gonna have to. Keep smacking them around the old-fashioned way. It was really funny. Whenever I was like trying to uh, like go after Groudon in the main story, there's like three monster houses through the magma caverns. And one of them that I went into, like, they used, like, Earthquake, and they, like, knocked out most of them of the other Pokemon in the Monster House. Just like, that was easy. Yoink. Okay. I think we're nearing the end of this dungeon. The music's just like permanently changed. Do you think the Pokemon that live in the mystery dungeons uh, ever get sick of hearing the theme song? For, for their particular dungeon? I say the stream is totally underrated. I haven't been here for too long, but really en enjoyable so far. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate that.
Yep. I am probably going to wrap things up here pretty soon, though. I usually stream for about four hours at a time. Um, I guess, like, next stream, we're going to need to uh, get us a water type that can work with waterfalls. So we can go to the new dungeon. This is a really pr productive day, though. Got our... Uh, Cool lava to Typhlosion. Got our uh, team up to gold rank. Um, gonna drop our items off and store our money, and that's probably gonna wrap things up. got all this stuff and we only went into that dungeon with a single apple. That has to be like one of the best dungeons to do that in. Yeah, like I said, glad you guys are enjoying the stream. I am going to go ahead and wrap things up here though. Um, yeah, I'll be back on Wednesday though. Uh, yeah, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern to about 1. Sometimes they go a little bit over overboard if we're like fighting like a boss or something. But yeah, if we're gonna go on the quest for more water types and continue post-game stuff next time. Hope to see you guys there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching. I'll be back Wednesday. Have a good one.